Hey, this is Dizzy Reed from Guns N' Roses, and you're watching GNR Central. Yeah! <laughs> Hey everybody, what's going on and welcome to Guns N' Roses Central and let's talk about the news for today. So Slash did an interview recently, he's actually done two interviews lately where he talked about the Me Too movement and in a recent interview he did with Yahoo he talked about how, um, you know, how Guns N' Roses catalog has aged over the last 30 years in the era of Me Too and he basically said that, you know, listen, we some of the songs could be sexist like It's So Easy, Back Off Bitch, maybe Locomotive. But they weren't really done with a malicious intent, and the relationships they had with women weren't really um, uh, weren't really disrespectful or or aggressive or anything like that. So, if you guys want to read the full interview, I've linked to it down below. So, we've also got a new picture of Axl Rose from 1995. So, a lot of fans love the wild wilderness era of Axel where you know between 94 and 2000 he kind of disappeared from the public eye we had a really good quality shot of him from a guitar show he attended back in 1995 what's funny is we have two other shots of Axel from this guitar show that have been circulating online for a number of years um, that a lot of people have seen but there's finally some context in terms of what was going on at the story so if you guys want to know the full story I've linked to it down below but uh, these are some of the other photos of Axel that were taken from the event this is the one that showed up this week on the internet. This other one, a lot of people haven't seen. Um, it's kind of funny. Some people are saying, like, those jeans are so 1990s, and, you know, the fashion always changes from decade to decade. This is the one that probably a lot of you guys have seen online. This one has been circulating online for quite a while, but these are all taken from the same guitar show in California. And we also had another interview with Slash where he talked about why he refuses to sign with a major record label. In fact, Slash pretty much has his own record label these days. He said he doesn't want to work with a big record label because he doesn't want to be playing and giving a lot of his money to somebody else. And he gets to be his own boss. And while he does use uh, a major distributors for getting his music out there, he is not uh, basically owned by a record label, which is nice. Although Guns N' Roses still have to deal with Universal, which is kind of funny. But Slash also went on to talk about the music business today. He said, at this point, you've got big commercial artists that are in your sort of upper echelon of the top 40. The labels pay out these massive, massive advances to you, and they get their money back in every way possible. Then you have other artists that if they don't conform to the top 40 standard, they've got one shot. If they don't make it, they're out. There's no air in our people. There's no one going out to all the venues looking for new talent to develop. All things considered, even with Guns N' Roses, there was a nucleus of a great group or a great artist that needed to hone their skills and put out one, two, even three records before they really hit. But there was a promise, and they saw that, and they had the vision. That just doesn't exist anymore. We had a new interview surface on YouTube. I don't know how, when it was from, but it was with Poison's drummer Ricky Rocket, and he talked about Slash uh, joining Poison, or at least auditioning for the band, and how pissed off Slash was that he never got the guitar player uh, position in the band and this is kind of contrary to what Slash has said. Slash kind of blew it off and said I never wanted to be in Poison. I didn't really dig the fact that they wore makeup and costumes and that kind of stuff. There was an interview that Variety magazine posted with the cast of a film called Her Smell which was featured at the Toronto International Film Festival and they talked to the actors and actresses and they also talked to one of the writers who said that he came up with the idea of the movie. It's basically about a female punk rock band and how the Guns N' Roses reunion sort of served as a catalyst for the story of the film. So if you guys want to see the full interview, I've linked to it down below. We've also got a cool tour of the Sunset Strip from former Guns N' Roses manager Vicki Hamilton. So she did a 25-minute long tour where she talked about the Sunset Strip. She's out on the strip talking about the area. And she even talks about what it was like back in the 80s during the hair metal scene. And finally, with Slash playing the Whiskey A Go-Go recently, he played two gigs there. He had some friends in the audience. In fact, some of the members of the Guns N' Roses entourage stopped by. We had Betta who showed up. Uh, actually, one of our uh, people who helps us out from time to time, Michaela, ran into Betta outside of the whiskey and took a photo with her. And then we also had Del James who was there one night. And we also had Kat Benzova as well as um, Fernando's sister Vanessa there as well. And then you can see Betta in the background too. So no word on whether Axel was there. I doubt he showed up to the whiskey. But that basically does it for today's news, guys. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like button if you enjoyed that video. And be sure to subscribe if you love Guns N' Roses as much as I do. Take care. What's going on? It's Alex Cross with Pokers and Blow, and you're watching GNR Central. Right on.